regreso aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network. Y en este segmento vamos a explorar esa, ese mito, quizá esa versión que escuchamos siempre de que el fin de año es el mejor tiempo para comprar un auto porque los concesionarios están, como dicen ellos mismos, de, sacando espacio de los modelos 2013 para traer, eh, darle la llegada a los 2014. Y entonces eh, se supone que hay buenas ofertas, hay siempre eh, esos deals que todo el mundo está buscando. Así que vamos a escuchar una entrevista que hicimos eh, esta semana con eh, un par de, de expertos. Una de ellas es una coach financiera, eh, Lynette Cafani Cox, y el otro es James Bell, que es el, 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 el liazón, el contacto entre los consumidores de la General Motors, eh, que se dedica, es una posición muy interesante porque él escucha de verdad, eh, va por ahí por todo el país y escucha a los consumidores lo que quieren, lo que están buscando en los autos y trata de, eh, lo, da sus informes y entonces la General Motors trata de implementar todo eso dentro de los autos. Así que eh, vamos a, we switching out to English now, uh, so we can uh, do the interview uh, about, uh, to answer that question, if this is really a good time to buy a new car. Well, uh, now we're uh, with uh, uh, finance coach Lynette uh, Calfani Cox and uh, James Bell, our friend and uh, frequent guest here at the show about, from uh, General Motors, Consumer Affairs. Uh, so I, uh, you're telling me that this is the best time to buy a car. Why is that? Well, it's a, kind of a perfect storm. A lot of factors that are all at play here right now. First off, you got the transition from the 2013 model year into the 14. So if you're looking for a great deal on the outgoing model, it's a good time. Or even if you're looking at something new on the 14, a lot of the car companies are putting some incentives on those to get people to come in and have a look. So you can get a good deal on both uh, the newer and the uh, older vehicle, even though it's still a new car. Uh, at the same time, you've got a lot of pent-up demand. The average age of a car on, the, on American roads today is over 11 years old. So you've got a lot of people who have been thinking, oh, that, uh, the current car is making that funny noise again. Or it might be time to put new brakes or new tires on the old car. You don't want to spend that money once again. So it allows you to get into a new car that's going to have a warranty, that's going to have a better fuel efficiency. So again, you've got this perfect storm of, of pent-up demand with people coming back in the marketplace and with the manufacturers bringing some great products with money on top as well. Okay, and uh, Lynette, uh, from your side, uh, being an expert in uh, per, uh, fi uh, personal finance, I mean, uh, sometimes it's even though the, the market is there for people who don't have the money or don't have enough money, might not be the first time. So what is your main advice for people when uh, they're getting ready to buy a new car? Well, I think two things you should keep in mind. One is that you certainly don't want to overextend yourself. You want to be realistic about your own family budget and about how much car you really do need. And then I think you should think about all the ways in which you can potentially save money when you're buying a new car. Can you qualify for 0% financing? Can you get a rebate? Who has the best offers and deals in the marketplace? And then can you even leverage some of your existing spending in a way that will give you some savings for that down payment? That's hard to come up with for some people, that down payment. But, you know, Capital One actually did a survey, and they found that only about 5% of consumers realize that there are automotive-related credit card rewards that they can tap into. But when they were asked about it, more than 50% of consumers said, oh, hey, I'd like that. If there's a credit card that I could use and then I could rack up some money towards a down payment, yeah, I'd be game to use that. Well, there actually are such cards like that in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, a great one that I like is the GM card from Capital One. And here's how it works. You just go about your normal everyday spending. You're buying, you know, at the mall for clothes. You're buying groceries at the store. Maybe you're filling up your gas tank uh, with fuel, that kind of thing. And then at the end of the year, you're going to get a certain amount of earnings credited to your account based on your spending. So let's say you spend about $15,000 for among your family members using the credit card in the course of a year. Well, at the end of that year, you have $450 that you can apply towards the down payment of a new GM vehicle. It's a car that you might want to purchase or even a car that you lease. And it's terrific because there's no cap on the amount that you can earn. I use the $15,000 example as just a number, but there's no cap. And it also doesn't expire. So those earnings can take you into, say, 2015, 2016, 2018. Maybe you're not ready to buy a car in 2014, but you might want to buy a car down the road. So it's a great way to be strategic in your process of buying a car and also to leverage some of your ordinary kind of everyday spending. 
Yeah, and so it's your like saving uh, without even noticing, right? Not like what you do in your everyday thing. But uh, can you go back to a little bit to the down payment part of it? I always heard that uh, a good um, formula is that you should not spend on your monthly payment more than 10% of your uh, monthly income. Is that correct? Um, that's a benchmark rule that a lot of people have used when they look at the overall cost of car ownership versus income. There's many different measures, though, that I think you can use. 10% is a guideline that people use when they think about other costs. So you have to take into account your total budget. Like, do you have a mortgage? And if so, is it a high mortgage? Do you have property taxes or are you paying rent? Do you have other obligations, other outstanding credit card debt or student loans? Do you have child care payments to make, et cetera? So the 10% rule that some people have typically espoused is sort of a guideline based on the assumption that you probably have some of these other debts or obligations to contend with. In general, though, of course, the more you can put towards your down payment, the smaller your monthly note is going to be when it comes to having a car payment. So that's why you want to make sure that you can accrue as much uh, savings or even earnings in the case of using a rewards card towards that down payment. It really is a, a sort of painless way um, to help you save. Yeah, and another quick one uh, on formulas. Is it true that if, the, um, if you put $1,000 more on your down payment, you will save about like $100 less in, on your monthly payment? Um, no, that's probably not unequivocally true in all cases, and I'll tell you why. You have to look at what's your financing rate. In other words, do you have if you have a, a new car that you're buying, you might be able to get a special... 0% offer, that's typically only for, you know, new vehicles as opposed to buying a used car. But you also have to look at overall, what is the term of the car note? Is it a five-year, six-year, seven-year? Is it a three-year? Is it a lease? Um, how big is the down payment? So there's a lot of variables that go into play. So I don't think you can unequivocally say that, you know, um, every extra $1,000 down payment will automatically reduce it by $100 or so. There's a lot of calculations that go into it. And, and then the other thing to think about in that calculation is the, the residual, the resale value of the vehicle. If you're leasing a car, you want to lease a vehicle that has that very good residual value because that's going to lower that gap between your, your uh, purchase price and your uh, turn-in price. So that's going to lower the price. So maybe leasing Model A versus Model B could save you fifty dollars a month because Model B is going to be worth more at the end, and that also pays you back then um, when you, if you're looking to buy a car. You know, maybe five years down the road, you're going to trade it in or sell it privately. You want to make sure you're going to get as much of that money back as you can. Yeah, exactly. And James, uh, obviously, GM has like a huge range of uh, models and. Uh, 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 different engines, diesel, electric, hybrid, and all that. Are, are there differences in those, uh, uh, the cost of those uh, different kind of vehicles? Well, I think the best advice when it comes to, um, you know, the type of car you're looking at is to be very honest with what you're going to be using the car for. Uh, you know, the average person drives about 28 miles a day. So when you talk about a full electric car that has a range of 100 or so miles, then that's going to be more than enough. Uh, or maybe you want to run electric, but every now and then you have a longer drive, you got to go visit grandma or go see some friends, then maybe a car like the Chevrolet Volt or the Cadillac ELR would be best for you because it's got that electrified drive at the beginning and then has a small gasoline engine on board to carry you on. Um, and you've got other vehicles like the Chevrolet Malibu that has stop-start technology, allows the engine to turn off at a stoplight. If you're not moving anywhere, don't use fuel. So, yeah, there's a lot of great technology. Clean diesel, you mentioned that. If you're a highway uh, runner doing 25,000, 30,000 miles a year, then maybe the new uh, cruise with uh, clean diesel technology is the best move for you. So it really is uh, time to be smart, to really be honest with how you're going to use the car and then find the vehicle that best meets those needs. Yeah, so there's a lot of homework to be done before you actually go to the dealership or you start selecting the car, right? So, like, for both uh, yeah, yeah. financially and, like, at the... Part of the fun. You know, that should be part of the fun. It's, it's, you don't just go to the dealership and kind of throw yourself and say, show me what the rebates are, tell me what my credit score is, tell me about the miles per gallon. No, know those things beforehand. Try to, uh, try to know uh, more, if not more, than, than the, um, uh, not much more, should they, than the, than the salesperson. Because <laughs> that's going to really save you a lot of money. You're attaching yourself to that vehicle. Make sure it's the right one. Excellent. So where can people find out more information about the card and, uh, and just general tips on uh, this uh, experience? For the card that uh, I mentioned the, the, um, from Capital One, you can go to CapitalOne.com backslash GM card. It's a great way, again, to be able to amass savings for your down payment. Yeah. If you're interested in any of the cars we talked about, please go to GM.com.
Yeah, and uh, James, obviously there's like uh, configurators and all that, and people can really have a better idea of what the, the cars are gonna cost when before they go to the dealership, right? Yeah, have your jump on there uh, as soon as you can and uh, pick out your new stingray, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much to both of you, uh, Lynette and James. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon again. Thank you. Muy interesante ahí los, eh, los consejos que nos dan eh, Lynette Calfani Cox y James Bell sobre cuándo es de verdad el mejor momento para comprar un auto nuevo. A veces eh, vemos la publicidad, eh, nos entusiasmamos eh, y no hacemos esa tarea, el homework eh, de lo que estaban hablando ahí. Hay, que, hay muchos recursos ahora en internet, ya no hay ninguna excusa para ir a un dealership y que te sorprendan con alguna, no digamos trampa, pero con alguna algún precio, algún modelo que en realidad tú no puedes pagar. Eh, hay fórmulas para todo, hay calculadoras donde uno puede poner eh, cuánto se va a poner de down payment, cuánto va a ser el costo, el pago mensual. Tampoco es muy bueno guiarse solamente por uno de los factores. Eh, el pago mensual a veces puede ser bajo, pero si el down payment es muy alto o la tasa de interés al que se va a financiar el auto es demasiado eh, elevado, el auto puede salir mucho más caro de lo que parece en la superficie, así que muy interesante todo eso. Eh, cuando regresemos vamos a hablar con una ingeniera mexicana del grupo Chrysler que está triunfando acá en Estados Unidos. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.